All right, welcome to fifth grade. Uh, so here we are talking about the European conquest of Africa. All right, so first thing you need to look, we'll just look at this map really briefly. Um, the reason I have you look at this map is because I want you to get the idea of why Europe uh, started colonizing, okay? Because that's really key, very important to our study. Um, notice the size of it, it's very small. Um, they don't have a lot of natural resources anymore by the 1600s because they've been around for so long that they've pretty much um, annihilated all of their um, resources that they have. Okay, so they're looking for new ones, and they look all over the place. All right, um, so a couple things here. The Portuguese start this off, all right? Um, and if you look back at the previous map, Portugal is this country right here next to Spain. All right, so there's Portugal. Okay, and they start exploring Africa's west coast because they were looking for gold, all right? Um, so they create these trade relationships, and for the most part, they're equals. Uh, however, the Portuguese figure out that they can go to the eastern side of Africa and completely control the... Uh, the civilizations there and the cities and they they do that and they overtake them uh, and then the other countries such as England France and the Dutch which if you look on our map again here really quickly um, are all located over here here's the Netherlands a very small country uh, England is this island right here and then France is located just to the south uh, of of England as well so all very close not a lot of them have a lot of land um, in terms of resources like England and the Netherlands do France a little bit more but France hates England so they will join in any party that England joins in okay um, and they're looking up for to set trade posts uh, because they they want to be they want to get in on all the money and this is when the slave trade starts right here people all right this is when the slave trade starts because they are looking for workers to work in their fields in North and South America. So at the same time, the Europeans are uh, going about and colonizing in the Americas, they are doing the same thing in Africa as well. All right, And so the slave trade moves so many Africans out of their societies that a lot of tribal societies in Africa just break down and get lost uh, to history because so many of them were taken or killed. Uh, here's a picture of the slave trade I was talking about. So if you notice, a big thing about this, and this is a big part of colonization. Right. We talked a little bit about this in class. Is that the mother countries, which are over here in Europe. Okay, these are the mommies. All right, say hi, mom. Um, they get all of the natural resources. So if we look, so if we follow this one here, um, these natural resources of whale oil, furs, iron, lumber, ginger, all get sent back to Europe, especially England, okay? And then in return, they send them back manufactured goods, all right? So they take the raw natural state and send it back. How Africa joins into the party is that they provide all of the slave labor to harvest all of these things that um, many people didn't want to harvest anymore, okay? So that's how this kind of triangular trade route works really quickly. I won't get too much into detail. Um, so that leads us up to the end of the slave trade because of, oops. This leads us to the end of the slave trade uh, because there were so many people who resisted it by the end of it uh, that it was just, it ended up dying off, okay? So from there, um, we end up with this, uh, need for resources uh, because the Americas have split off and they're on their own now so Europe is left without their workhorse force and their resources so they look to Africa and while they're in there um, the Europeans just completely dominate because the Africans don't have the skills or the technology or the know-how uh, to stop them because the Europeans are just that far more advanced than they are and lastly, it, it leads us up to this point of where by 1914, so not even 100 years ago, which really in terms of history is not that long ago, um, 
Europe causes these giant problems for Africa. And here's, here's why. Um, if we look, what the European nations did is that they divided up these lands. Okay, so they divide them up. How they divide them up? Well, they divided them of basically what the Europeans wanted. Okay, that's how they divide them up. They did not. Okay, they did not care about ethnic groups. or the labor conditions to which they made these Africans work in. We, we saw that in, our, uh, in the primary source that we read to get us introduced to this topic. It just brutal conditions. As the Europeans said, I don't care less, you don't get what we want, we'll kill you. Okay? Just not that great of a time in, in our history. And it still exists today. A hundred years later in Africa, you can still find a lot of this in the did not part in other African nations that are still struggling to get their independence and be established and set because of the ethnic groups, the various ethnic groups and the labor conditions that they've had to face for so many years. Uh, so lastly, here's just a map and just draw your attention over here to the key. You'll notice that most of it is either yellow, which is French, or it's purple, or pink, I'm sorry, which are the British, okay? Again, stripping a nation of its natural resources, taking it away from them, taking the education away from them. You know, Africa in 2013 is still trying to recover and establish what was taken from them back in the mid to late 1800s. So this is a very trying um, time in uh, our history that is really just not a very happy one, okay? If you have questions, um, you know, write them down, bring them to class, put them on the notes, uh, and we will discuss them in class when we get to this part again. Um, hope you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.